Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose is considered as the most revered freedom fighter of India, who built the first Indian armed force named Azad Hind Bose. Subhash Chandra Bose was born on 23rd of January 1897 in Katak, Odisha, India. His father was Janaki Nath Bose and mother was Prabhavati Datta. He had all total of 13 siblings, 6 sisters and 7 brothers. He came from an affluent family. He was an Indian revolutionary during British era in India. His attempts to get rid of the British with the help of the Nazi party and Imperial Japan during the time of Second World War left him a troubled legacy. Although he is now a well-known name to Indians, but at that time of revolution he was criticized a lot in Indian National Congress as his ideology did not match with the ideology of Mahatma Gandhi. But sooner or later, his sacrifices were recognized and that is the reason, in order to give more value to his contribution in the Indian independence struggle, his birthday is now celebrated as Parakram Divas in India. The day is now celebrated each year in the memory of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, the unsung hero of the Indian independence struggle. He was a student of Protestant European School in Kadak. He was a meticulous student and with his hard work, he was able to get second position in the matriculation exam. Later on, he went to Presidency College, now University in Calcutta. At the age of 16, he became fascinated by the teachings of Swami Vivekananda and Ramakrishna after reading their works. Vivekananda's emphasis on social services and reform had inspired Bose and influenced his socialist political ideology. Subhash Chandra Bose's first act of defiance against the British was in Presidency College when he assaulted Professor Oten who allegedly made anti-India comments and manhandled Indian students. He was expelled from the college, although he officially appealed that he didn't actually participate in the assault. He was expelled from the college on the basis of some false allegations, which ignited a strong sense of rebellion in him and the mistreatment of Indians at the hand of the British, which he observed to be happening widespread in Calcutta, only added fuel to the fire. He took admission in the Scottish Church College under the University of Calcutta and from there he had his graduation degree in philosophy in 1918 AD. He secured top ranks throughout his study in school and university. Subhash Chandra Bose did his graduation in philosophy in the class of 1918 AD and then he prepared for the Indian civil services exam after going to London with his brother Satish and with his immense power of knowledge. He cracked the exam in his very first attempt. He was ranked fourth in the prestigious Indian civil services exam in 1919 AD. Still, he was not happy as he knew he would now have to work under the British government. But after the infamous incident of the infamous Dilan Wallabag massacre, he was sure that he would not serve the English anymore. And to give it an end, he finally resigned in 1921 AD from the Indian civil services to show anger and resistance to British government. Subhash Chandra Bose initially praised Gandhi a lot and due to which he even became the member of Indian National Congress, INC, where he even started his own newspaper with the name Swaraj to promote the idea of self-governance and from there he began his political journey. At that time, he was guided by Chittaranjan Das. 
he became the president of the All India Youth Congress and became the editor of the newspaper Forward, started by Chittaranjan Das himself in 1923 AD. Due to his amazing leadership skills, he was even chosen as the mayor of Calcutta at that time. In a very small period of time, he became an important and powerful part of Indian National Congress. Bose was sent to prison in Mandalay for the nationalist activities in 1925 AD. He was released in 1927 AD and became the Indian National Congress's General Secretary. In 1928 AD, the Motilal Nehru Committee demanded dominion status in India, but Subhash Chandra Bose was at the site of Jawaharlal Nehru and demanded complete independence of India from the British. Mahatma Gandhi disagreed with the ideology of Subhash Chandra Bose as Mahatma Gandhi never wanted non-violence which she could sense in the ways of Subhash Chandra Bose. During the civil disobedience movement, he was sent to jail. In 1930 AD, while he was in prison, Subhash Chandra Bose was elected as the mayor of Calcutta. Later, he was released when the Gandhi Irwin Pact was signed in 1931 AD. For the very first time, he was elected as president of Indian National Congress at the Haripura in 1938 AD and again he was elected at the Tripuri session in 1939 AD by defeating Dr. P. Sitaramaya who was supported by Gandhi himself. He maintained strict standards during the commencement of the First World War and demanded full independence of India from the British within six months. He was expelled from Congress leadership positions in 1939 following differences with Mahatma Gandhi and the Congress High Command. After openly attacking the Congress's foreign and internal policies, he had differences in their approaches to fight the British. While he advocated for armed revolution against the British, Mahatma Gandhi was adamant about only using non-violence techniques to gain freedom from the colonizers. He faced a lot of criticism from Congress due to which he finally resigned from Indian National Congress and made his own progressive group called the Forward Bloc. During the Second World War, Bose was against the use of Indian men for wars of other countries which led to his arrest in Calcutta. In January of 1941 AD, he left the house in disguise and reached Germany via Afghanistan. He met the Nazi leaders to help to throw the British from India. He also met with the leaders from Japan to get their help in ending the British rule. At the outset of the Second World War, he had traveled to several countries including the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, and Imperial Japan to seek an alliance with each and to attack the British government in India. He was willing to use whatever aid he could get in order to bring freedom to India. Mass movement was started by him against British rule using Indian men in the wars of foreign countries and it became a huge success due to the great support. Later, he reorganized with Imperial Japanese assistance and led the Azad Hindu Fauj or Indian National Army INA formed with Indian prisoners of war and plantation workers from British Malaya, Singapore and other parts of Southeast Asia against the British forces. With Japanese monetary, political, diplomatic and military assistance, he formed the Azad Hind government in exile and regrouped and led the Indian National Army. Along with the Japanese army, 
they brought independence to Andaman and Nicobar Islands and came to Manipur in India. In 1942 AD, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose met Hitler, but Hitler had no interest in, in liberating India. Hitler did not give any clear promise to, of assistance to Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. He reached Singapore in July of 1943 AD, where he met Rosh Bihari Bose, who was also struggling for Indian independence movement. So he joined him and organized the Azad Hind Fauj, aka Indian National Army. And at that time, he even got the title Netaji. There, he tried his level best in putting efforts to set India free. He couldn't get that success, which was needed. The Indian National Army liberated the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, but when it reached Burma, their plan failed miserably due to bad weather conditions. In addition to this, defeat of Japan and Germany in the Second World War also proved to be a huge blow in his journey of Indian independence movement. Subhash Chandra Bose went to Austria for his treatment where he met a female typist named Emily Shankill. At that time, he too needed a typist to write his book. After getting acquainted, Subhash Chandra Bose married Emily Shankill. Anita Bose is the daughter of Subhash Chandra Bose. However, for a long time, people did not know about their marriage. It is believed that Subhash Chandra Bose was killed in a plane crash in Taipei, Taiwan on August of 18, 1945 AD. But a section of people still believe that Bose survived the crash and went to hiding to escape the British. Following the much-talked-about news of the plane crash in Taiwan on 18th August 1945, it was believed that Subhash Chandra Bose had taken the guise of a sadhu and lived in Uttar Pradesh. People knew him as Gunnami Baba. He was declared a war criminal by the British when he joined Japan against the Allies during World War II and started a war against the Indian government for independence of the motherland. Therefore, the mystery of Netaji's disappearance deepened. Many inquiry committee were tasked with finding out what had happened on that day. The Figgis Report of 1946 and the Shah Nawaz Committee 1956 concluded that Bose died in the plane crash in Taiwan. The Kolasa Commission 1970 also concurred with the previous reports, but the Mukherjee Commission 2005 said that Bose's death could not be proved. This report was rejected by the government. Many believe that Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose lived at many places in Uttar Pradesh after changing his identity. Gunnami Baba, whom many people believed was actually Netaji Bose, lived in the guise of a sadhu at several places in Uttar Pradesh, including Naimi Sharyana, Nimsar, Basti, Ayodhya and Faizabad, he kept changing his place of abode, mostly within the city itself. Gunnami in Hindi literally meant anonymity. Gunnami Baba remained a complete recluse and interacted with only a handful of believers who visited him on a regular basis. Gunnami Baba never stepped out of his house, rather room, and majority of the people claimed to have never seen him. One of his landlords, Gorbak Singh Sodhi, tried to take him twice to the Faizbad civil court on the text of some work but failed. Gunnami Baba finally settled in the house of Ram Bhavan at Faizbad in 1983 AD where he reportedly died on September 16, 1985 AD. If it were really Netaji Subhash Thunderbose, he would be a 88-year-old. Strangely, there is no proof that any person really died. There is no death certificate, no photograph of the dead body or the people present during cremation. 
There is no cremation certificate either. In fact, Gunami Baba's passing away was not known to people until 42 days after his supposed death. Though the Uttar Pradesh government officially rejected the claim that Gunami Baba was actually Subhash Chandra Bose in disguise, his followers still refused to accept the claim. In February 1986 AD, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's niece, Lalita Bose, was brought to Faizbad to identify the items found in Gunami Baba's room after his death. At first sight, she was overawed and even identified some items to be Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's family. Baba's room was filled up by over 2,000 articles in the 25 steel trunks. No one had ever seen them during his lifetime. Handwriting expert Carl Baggett was also given the two sets of letters to analyze without being told of the identities of the writer. After he said they were written by the same man, it was revealed to him that the person in question were Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and Gunami Baba. Carl Baggett stood by his conclusion and gave a science statement to the effect. Carl Baguette was an authority on document examination with over 40 years of experience and had completed over 5,000 cases. Accordingly, the government set up an inquiry commission on June 28, 2016, headed by Justice Vishnu Sahai. The report stated that Gunnabi Baba was a follower of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, but not Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. The report of one of the member commission was tabled in Uttar Pradesh Assembly in December of 2020, and it said Gunnami Baba was not Subhash Chandra Bose in disguise. Subhash Chandra Bose, also known as Netaji, was a freedom fighter and the leader of the Indian independent movement against British rule. This is some controversy surrounding the circumstance of his death. According to the official versions of the event, Subhash Chandra Bose died in a plane crash in Taiwan in August 18, 1945. However, some people believe that he may have survived the crash and lived for many, many years after under a different identity. There is no conclusive evidence to support these claims, and the cause of Bose's death remains a mystery. He was jailed 11 times during his fight for freedom. His radical activities against British rule often led him to imprisonment but never deterred him. Azad Hind radio station in Germany was established by Nidaji. Phrases such as Jai Hind, give me blood and I shall give you freedom, were coined by Nidaji. He was also the one to select Rabindranath Tagore's Janagana Manu as his preferred national anthem. Some of Subhash Chandra Bose's famous quotes are, quote unquote, give me blood and I will give you freedom. Quote unquote, no real change in history has ever been achieved by discussions. Quote unquote, freedom is not given, it is taken. One individual may die for an idea, but the idea will, after his death, incarnate itself in a thousand lives. Quote unquote, soldiers who always remain faithful to their nations, who are always prepared to sacrifice their lives, are invincible.